This is the fifth lecture in a series on fiber optics by the Fiber Optic Association, the Professional Society of Fiber Optics. This lecture covers fiber optic splices and connectors, the similarities and differences and where they're used. Splices and connectors are two different methods used for joining optical fibers. Splices tend to be used as permanent connections for concatenating or joining two fibers permanently, such as those buried or run aerially in the outside plant. Connectors are used for ending optical fibers, providing demountable terminations for other connections, either to other fibers or to transmitters and receivers. Connectors also allow access to fibers for testing. Both splices and connectors must have similar performance characteristics. They are expected to have low loss and low reflectance. They are expected to have high mechanical strength and high reliability. They have to be easy to use to install in the field and they must be able to withstand the environment in which they will be installed. Loss is probably the most important performance specification and there's lots of reasons that fibers have loss when they're joined together. As you can see from this diagram, the losses may be caused by imperfect connectors, imperfect fibers, or imperfect processes. All of these things must be understood in order to get low loss joints. We'll cover this later when we cover how splices are made and connectors are made. Reflectance is caused by an imperfect joint between two fibers. If there is any air in the interface between the two fibers, it will cause a reflection. That reflection can cause problems with lasers or with noise in high bit rate, high powered systems. Splices have low reflectance due to their fusing in a fusion splicer or using index matching fluid in mechanical splices. Domed or PC polishes on connectors can minimize the reflectance. There are two types of fiber optic splices, fusion and mechanical. Fusion splices are made by welding two fibers together, typically with an electric arc. Mechanical splices uses some kind of alignment sleeve and an index matching gel to mechanically hold two fibers in alignment, which are then crimped. Fusion splices are done with an automatic machine that welds the fiber in an electric arc. It can automatically align the fibers and even estimate the loss once the splice is made. The machines can be expensive, but each splice is inexpensive. Each splicer, however, requires a high quality cleaver, often quite expensive, for best results. The fusion splicing process is straightforward. You strip, clean, and cleave the fiber, place the fiber in the splicer jaws properly, repeat with the second fiber, close the cover, Start the automated program and the splicing machine takes over from there. It completes the splice and estimates the loss. Once it's finished, you remove the fibers and place a splice protector over the splice. Mechanical splices use some type of fiber alignment, typically a V-groove or a capillary, an index matching gel to reduce the reflectance. The fibers are secured by crimping, either with a clamp or a crimp, to hold them in place. Fusion splicing gives lower splice loss because of the fusion of the two fibers in the electric arc. Mechanical splices tend to cost more per, per splice, however, because the splices themselves are complex mechanical devices. However, you don't need the expensive machine you need for fusion splicing. Mechanical splicing is similar to fusion splicing, but simpler. You strip, clean, and cleave the fiber, insert the first fiber in one end of the splice, repeat with the second fiber, and secure the fibers. It's that simple.
After the splices are made, they need protection from the environment. They don't have all the mechanical hardware of a connector. So completed splices are inserted in a splice tray, and the splice tray goes in a splice closure. The incoming cables are secured to the closure, and on loose tube cables, the tubes of the cable are secured to the splice tray. After all the splices are completed and the trays are placed in the closure, the closure is sealed to protect the fibers and splices from the environment. Fiber optic connectors provide a mechanical protection for the fiber and a good interface for mating two fibers or mating a fiber to an active device. You can see from this selection of connectors over the last 30 years, connectors have become much smaller, and at the same time, they've become much lower in loss. From the Deutsch connector at the bottom through the Biconic, the SC, and the LC, connectors are about one-tenth the size of what they used to be. And the Deutsch connector, which had a loss of well over 1 dB, is 10 times more than the loss than you can expect with a typical LC or SC connector today. Over the history of fiber optics, totaling over 30 years, about 80 different fiber optic connectors have been introduced into the marketplace. But these are the connectors that have been the most popular. The ST was introduced by AT&T in 1985, and shortly thereafter the SC was introduced by NTT in Japan. These two connectors pioneered the use of ceramic ferrules and connectors, which gave easy polishing and low loss. The LC connector, the blue connector in the upper right, was introduced about 10 years ago as a small form factor connector. It uses a smaller ceramic ferrule and has even higher performance. The MTP is a multi-fiber connector using a polymer ferrule that is used for multi-channel systems. It's less popular but used in prefabricated cable plants. A lot of the development of fiber optic connectors has gone into finding new ways to terminate fibers easier, simpler, and cheaper. Most connectors are using an, an adhesive and a polish technique with some type of adhesive and a polish at the end of the ferrule to get a good optical interface. You can also get pre-polished splice connectors which are already polished and have a splice in the back shell of the connector. In single mode fiber, the preferred method is usually to splice on a terminated pigtail with a fusion splicer to get the lowest loss and least reflectance. Do you need to terminate fiber optics in the field at all? Maybe not. You can design a prefabricated cabling system using computer aided design that can be taken into the field and plugged in, tested, and used. It will work for either premises applications or outside plant. It's widely used in fiber to the home, for example. A prefabricated system can be very cost effective in new construction because all of the work is done in the factory and it requires very, very little time and effort to install in the field. This is the fifth in a series of lectures that the Fiber Optic Association is posting on its YouTube channel. Lecture number six will elaborate on this presentation and cover splices in more detail. And lecture seven will cover connectors in more detail. Go to the FOA YouTube channel and you'll find other selections that cover installation processes on almost every topic you can imagine in fiber optics. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the worldwide professional society of fiber optics. You can go to our website, especially our reference guide to fiber optics, and find out almost anything you want about fiber optics.